This small speck sums up my entire PhD. For fish, it's a tasty meal. For us, it could be a huge step forward in the future of our food. In today's world, our production follows a linear model. That is, we take the natural resources that we need to make products that we buy and use and discard at the end of their life. And food's no different. We use resources to grow and produce it, and we buy it and use it and discard any excess. But food is not just a product. It's a necessity. One, that over one in nine people around the world don't have adequate access to every day. And we expect there to be two billion more of us in just 30 years, which poses the question, if we can't feed the people of today, how will we feed the people of tomorrow? Well, short answer is, we actually can. We produced enough food around the world to feed everyone, plus two billion. The problem is how we're using it. Close to 40% of the world's food never makes it on a plate. Rather, it's lost or wasted. Now, some of this is in edible parts or food that's spoiled, but if you take a look at these photos I've taken throughout the course of my work, a large majority of this is still perfectly good food. It's wasted for avoidable reasons. Now, food waste is a luxury. We know that higher wealth leads to higher waste. North America and Australia rank at the top of this list. And in these countries, the majority of this waste is coming from households. In Australia, the average household throws out $2,000 in groceries every year that they bought and never used. But it's not just our money being thrown in the bin and people needlessly going hungry, because food waste is fueling climate change. For every piece of food you waste, it's wasted all of the resources that went into growing it, producing it, transporting it, storing it. And these are valuable resources. If we look at how much land we use to grow food that never gets eaten, it's larger than the continent of Europe. Or fresh water, throwing out just one hamburger, wastes the same amount of water as if you leave your shower running for 90 minutes. Every year, we use 300 million barrels of oil. And when the food gets to landfill and rots, it produces methane. Altogether, food waste is responsible for 12% of global emissions. And as tackling climate change has become a vital priority, one of the easiest first steps might be to just eat the food. And it was this simple answer that had intrigued me. Because when we look out in nature, every other living thing consumes something. Yet unlike us, none of them have landfills of uneaten waste in their environment. That's because nature developed the motto, one's trash is another's treasure. So maybe the solution is as simple as changing the narrative. What if food waste isn't trash? What if it's treasure? Well, it is to this guy, the black soldier fly. In nature, they're decomposers. Their entire job is to eat and break down organic material. They can eat up to 10 times their body mass every day, which means we can divert a lot of food away from landfill. What's better is that they're edible, and they're 40% protein and 30% fat, which is far better than any protein bar you'll get off the shelf. Great, so the solution is that simple then. We just feed billions of tons of food waste to insects. More food for us, less waste, and it reduces our impact. We should all go home, right? In theory, maybe. In practice, not quite. In part because it's probably going to take quite a bit of time before you decide to go and grab 100 grams of black soldier fly larvae instead of ham at the deli. But insects form a part of the diet of so many animals. And that's convenient, because we farm a lot of animals. But our animal-based farming also has a hefty environmental price tag. Today, meat represents 10% of the world's food. Yet, it uses 80% of our farmland, 40% of our fresh water, and is responsible for 18% of global emissions. And a huge part of this cost simply comes down to the fact that we need to feed these animals. 
We grow a lot of food every year just as feed for them. And only a small percentage of those calories are actually transformed into meat. We also sometimes feed them things like chicken or fish or soy or wheat, things that we could just eat, making it rather illogical that we grow all of this food to feed our food, to get less food. Which is why this pellet's different. I made it using black soldier fly, fed exclusively on food waste. And using waste as a resource means we can continue to feed animals without competing for our own food or farmland and with a lower impact. But it gets better. We can further reduce this cost if we choose what we farm. See, all foods have different footprints. So to simplify, we can just compare what we call the feed conversion ratio. This is how much food an animal eats to gain a kilogram. So a cow will eat 10 kilos to gain that kilo, but a trout only needs 1.3. But fish is even better value. Unlike mammals, they're cold-blooded, so they don't actually use energy to maintain their body temperature. Also, unlike mammals, they live in water, where they're neutrally buoyant, so they don't spend energy against gravity. And all of this together means they have a higher edible yield. This is the actual amount of food we get out of the animal. So when you remove the bones and the hooves and the skin and the organs, about 50% of the cow comes into food product. But the trout? 75. So if we modify our ratio to resources in to get a kilogram of food, well, we automatically see a sevenfold reduction. And this translates to footprint. For example, if we look at emissions, to get a kilo of food from a cow generates eight times more emissions to get the same kilo from a trout. This is why this pellet is different and why I made it for fish. This is the simple solution. Our food waste is high-quality feed for insects, which are high-quality feed for fish, which is high-quality food for us. And us are the ones generating the waste. This is the future of food. This is circular production. But it doesn't just stop there, because the basis of this system is that waste doesn't exist. So let's go back to the flies for a second. I told you they eat a lot every day. Well, they also poop a lot. But we could change that narrative. What if that's not waste? What if it's a resource? Well, it's really high in nitrogen, which is a main component in agricultural fertilizers, something we rely very heavily on to grow our food right now. So some scientists went out and put some fly poop in a field, and what do you know? It works. Almost as if nature had intended decomposers to release nutrients back into the soil. And this is true for so many other products in this system. These insects, they shed their exoskeletons while they're growing. Well, these are really high in chitin. This is a valuable biopolymer used in the medical and pharmaceutical fields. When we put the protein into the fish pellets, we extract some of the fat. Well, we found this to be very useful in the cosmetics industry, but it can also be converted to biodiesel and used as fuel to, say, fuel a tractor. Transitioning to a circular production method might be one of the simplest and straightforward methods we have today as we try to tackle the global issues of food security and climate change. But relying on utilizing waste will not be enough. We still need to reduce it. And that solution can only come down to the billions of people that buy and use goods every day. So, consume less buy only what you need. And for fear of sounding like your mother, finish your food. Thank you.